Um, yeah. Wait. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, I was just, uh, well, well, first, thank you for taking this time. And I know it's it's actually pretty exciting. I was sharing with Tiffany, uh, as we're waiting for you, the first time that I met you or um, heard about you is actually started with a date back in 2010 when you were playing at the BAM Center. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, he had heard you on CBC radio and he's like, hey, let's let's go, you know, we'll go for a date night. We'll stay overnight at the BAM Springs and we go check this guy out. And I'm like, awesome. And I was like, really? Like a pianist? And he's like, yeah, what the heck? <laughs> let's do it. So I showed up and there's this, you know, black grand baby grand piano. You come walking in your black suit and your white shirt. And I remember thinking, I'm like, oh, this would be interesting. And um, <laughs> you started playing and I was just like, oh my gosh like honestly oh, thanks, I don't think Jill. I could listen but it's so true like um I don't know I know you've got great music and I've listened to many of your albums um but it's really hard not to come off of a good enough day because that's the one I fell in love with is like the entire album so yep no yeah 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 thank you I mean I a good enough day was my that was my launching point you know that's that's been the foundation of my career and I am beyond grateful for that moment in time. It seems surreal looking back because I, it was just an absolute act of faith. You know, like I, I emptied my bank account. I quit my job. I, I just piecemeal, I just kept chipping away at this record. And then it led to this record signing. And then I got offered this tour opening for Sarah Harmer across the States. And I had no idea how I was going to pay the rent, but I was like, yep, let's do it. And, uh, I just kept going from there, you know, um, but that, that, that record did it all. I did everything for me. That's foundation. Yeah. And it, what a yeah. beautiful foundation to come off of. Right. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, fantastic. And then this other story, we jump in a little bit more, but mm -hmm. then I saw you at MRU at Mount Royal university. And I can't remember the year. If I probably went back, it was around 2016, 17, I think in there. Um, and you probably will remember this moment because so my son, I had two tickets. I was going to bring my husband and I was like, no, my son needs to learn this appreciation, love for other music besides the rap and all that stuff that they listen to. And he's like, mom, there's not going to be anyone my age. I'm like, I'm sure this is Calgary. There'll be a variety. There'll be other kids. There'll be other people, right? No worries. He was like 14. And so we show up and we're front row and center. And I'm like, this is amazing. And he's in front I think the only person that was younger than him was a brand new baby that came and yeah, so yeah, sat, yeah. I do remember you might remember no one he's sitting there and I'm feeling horrible for you because I'm like oh my god because I'm looking in the poor kids like oh my god like really and like front row and I remember you went over to the piano and then you stopped and you stopped the whole series like and I can't remember what you said to him but you called him out and yeah. it was amazing I just laughed so yeah you definitely made it memorable He's yeah listen, i uh i i've made a career out of doing that it's my fit i i've it's one of the reasons why i love being an uncle long before i ever had kids is just having those little moments with kids because i remember when my relatives and friends my parents friends would do stuff to me when i was a kid and be like so embarrassing but at the same time exciting and fun you're just like i hate this moment but i love this moment but i hate this moment um so I'm at a show and if there's a kid near the front who I see like either it's like not quite sure if they like it or not, or at the, at the same time, just like too cool for school, I usually try to yeah. have a little fun. That's all. Well, and it was perfect because exactly then he enjoyed it. And honestly, now when he thinks back, he's like, yeah, I, I'm still learning to like the music, but I like yeah. him. So uh, that's, that's good. the win. That's so. good. I'll yeah, take that. That's the win for sure. I would rather have that on my epitaph, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So. And yeah. then I saw you at your um, return concert uh, this past spring in June when you played at uh, the Canoe Club here, like the oh, wow. concert that was supposed to be before, but wasn't. Was, so it's kind yep. of interesting because all three were so different. Like this was like almost like small town kind of feel like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and you're very natural and fantastic at that. So I'm so excited that you have this new album coming out. Um, yeah, me too. And I listened to your documentary, so it was great to have it behind the scenes. So I'm just really curious because you had so much life that happened, like with meeting Allison. And I have to say, I'm a, I'm a Saskatchewan girl, so I'm kind <laughs> of excited that you found a Saskatchewan Humboldt girl. So good on you. Yeah. Um, and then had a family. So I'm just curious that aside from, you know, them enriching your two boys and your wife enriching your personal life, 
how has it really transformed you as a music musician? Well, I think as a performer, and lots of people have been commenting on this on this last tour, um, I'm very comfortable uh, in a, like it's like I've I've shifted to yet another gear of just I just feel grounded, you know. I think having kids and settling down and meeting now and um, all the things we've been through in these last couple of years, I definitely feel incredibly in my sweet spot on the stage like this is not only where i'm supposed to be but is that much more meaningful because i i don't get to do it as much and i have a lot of responsibilities obviously as a husband and father and i love them and i yeah. wouldn't change it for anything but when i do have an opportunity to do music i squeeze every last drop out of it and um i do and just in the same way like when i have a chance it's just me and one of my boys or Mm -hmm. you know whatever it is just my wife and I have a date night or whatever it is it's like I squeeze an opportunity for what it's worth it's, there's a lot going on in life so mm -hmm. um, you have to otherwise it'll all be a blur and it'll all be done yeah. and I think the other thing is uh, is that I'm aware of these paradigm shifts that have happened in life from my father passing away to mm -hmm. getting married and settling down and having kids to now living in the country to you know these things that tick, tick, tick change you fundamentally, like your DNA changes. And I'm definitely a different person. I listened to that kid who made a good enough day, you know, um, so exuberant and, and naive and excited, like just so excited. But I can hear it in my voice. I was also slightly like afraid, like just like, like just like ah, singing, you know. Um, and I don't sing like that anymore. I don't feel like that anymore. I could just feel like a creature in his natural habitat now. So the music is going where the music needs to go and I'll never make a record like a good enough day again because I'm not that person. But um, I would love to go back in time and um, sing it as this person. I know that much. Mm, wouldn't that be interesting if you could do that? Yeah, yeah that time yeah. machine to do that. But it is, I mean, you say that you can see the maturity and I guess that's it. Like when I kind of look back at the concerts, there has mm -hmm. been to observe you as a snapshot, the evolution and the maturity and the depth. Uh, you can see that. And um, and I yeah. love, honestly, even in the Instagram stuff, because I saw the one where you post as like, here's the life of writing. And you're like yeah. interrupted. <laughs> like, you know, and I was like, that's so true. That is the life of a parent. Like, that's how oh, undeniable. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, those, those little things that you can't imagine, like if anyone had told me that, you know, at 5 a.m., my our newborn George is now like eight months now, but um, you know, he would just he reaches for dad, like he just he knows it's our time. Like the mornings are me with the boys, and um, as tired as you are, it's like he just gives you this smile, and he's just like so happy that it's like let's go, let's go do this, and you know, it doesn't matter how tired you are, it doesn't matter what's going on. You're just like yeah, come on, man, let's, let's go. It's yeah, just, and it's, it's the best. It's the best. It is the best. I love being moments are, those, those moments are so fleeting. Like now, my son, oh. that nervous, fortunately, he's 18. So that's what I yeah. mean. Like, I'm like, you just, yeah, you just soak it up because at some point, oh, yeah. They just don't I, need I, much. I can't even believe how much Henry now is two and a half year old. Like, it's just a whirlwind of, and I love it. Like, he's talking up a storm and he's, He's just so funny and sarcastic already. And like, I just, I love him. God, I love him to pieces. Yeah. But I already missed the baby that he was. And so now we have George. And I was like, oh, yeah. George, you don't understand, <laughs> man. Like, I'm, like I hold him just that extra bit longer, you know? I'm just like, yeah. it's, it's our last one. We're, um, unless something surprises us. <laughs> yeah. um, two is enough. Um, but yeah, he's already just like, he's so fast. He's changing so fast. Yeah, well, I'm so, so happy for you to see the, your personal life kind of taking off like that and being that grounding foundation. And then um, like, like this album, like I know I'm so excited for you because it's like, I guess another baby because you've been holding it for two years. Um, and then yeah. wonderful C word came along. Um, and honestly, <laughs> I listened to what tour brings this morning on my way to work. It's brilliant. Like I love oh, how you take in a good enough you. day. And like when you talked about like that going just that deeper in depth and you see and feel the maturity and the growth in your music. And it really is a great compilation and blending, I think, of all your your albums, but yet unique. And I'm just oh, curious, oh, like, good. 
what are you most proud of with this album? I think I'm most proud that I had the courage to return to it and keep going. So I finished the record in the end of 2019, early 2020. And then I already had tours planned, including Massey Hall and NAC, a bunch of stuff in North America and Europe and stuff. And, and then obviously the, the pandemic happened and everything came to a crushing, crushing halt. And um, at the same time, you know, we had to, uh, we had Henry, like uh, we're just having Henry, and we moved to the country, and then we kind of were having another boy, and all this stuff was happening. But I was like, I have this time for the first time in my life. I have this time to actually, truly laser focused work on a record and not just abandon it because there's a tour that's coming. In our industry, it's very like, especially because I'm a theater artist, it's booked, you know, two to three years in advance, and it. And you're like, yeah, I'll have the record ready in time. And suddenly you're like, oh, I need a record. This is happening. So you're just like, and it's not that you like rush it or make something bad, mm -hmm. but you just don't have the time that you would love uh, with a, the schedules to be like, I'm going to just work on these stances and I'm going to just, could this course be better? How could it be better? And this time around, I did that. I, mm -hmm. every, every word, every lyric, every song, every melody, every bit of production, everything played was worked and worked and worked and worked to the point where I was like, it is absolutely finished. And wow. I could, I've never been able to say that before. So it feels amazing that it worked out because it could have gone horribly wrong. If you, you know, it's like yeah. a souffle. It's like, you keep opening up the oven, it's gonna yeah. fall. Yeah. Um, I could have ruined it. And, and I, I don't think I did. I think I, I made it mm -mm. far, far better. Yeah, like to me, it really feels like um, a legacy moment for you, like this moment in time where I think like what you just described, you had the grace mm -hmm. to go be able to go in and do it. And it's kind of like, I think when you say you went through the song that you, for your wife, right, it's like how you got to take it and kind of like a string, a few, but then now going to a full on orchestra, like I think that almost calculates yeah. how you took that album, like you took it from being at this level, beautiful but made it into a, a complete masterpiece. Oh, and you got to work with some amazing people by the sounds of it. And I'm just mm -hmm. curious, like, so who, I guess, on your bucket list is there that you would love to, uh, you know, bring in and collaborate with on another piece in the future? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, it's funny. When I first started, I, I wrote and performed and produced everything myself, like a good enough days. That's me. There was a, yeah. a drummer who did a few overdubs and stuff, but that's just me. Yeah. And then as I went on, I, I started letting a few more people in. Mm -hmm. um, and when I made The Waiting, it actually was very much a band record because I had been touring so much with my band. Um, I still wrote the songs and um, produced it and stuff, but uh, it, I had players. We were doing it pretty much live off the floor. And then you evolve, evolve, evolve. And now I'm as I went along, I also on Burning Bright, uh, I had one co-write. And then by the time I did Ever After, which was an entire record of co-write, mm -hmm. um, I realized not only that I loved writing with other people, but that I had a lot to learn from other people. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm a far better songwriter now because I went down that road and, and, and just watched people and how they work and how they come at things. And I learned a lot from Jamie and I learned a lot from Linda on this record. And so I'm going to continue to find writer producers that move me in a way that I feel like we can elevate my songwriting and mm -hmm. uh, elevate production. And I just want to keep learning. I mean, I'm still fascinated. By this. I am. Good. I still love it. Good. So you're I making lots. Love it. So this is I mean, I'm, close to end. <laughs> no, no, there's, there's lots in me. I'm, I feel like an elastic band that was pulled back at this point and just finally got let go. I think the world feels that way, but. I'm, I started chipping away at an instrumental record, a Christmas record, a B-Sides collection. I'm formulating what the next record will be. Like it's, there's a lot of music coming now for sure. And that's great. And so Christmas, fantastic. It's, I think I can buy <laughs> all of them. So I don't have one from you, obviously. So yeah, definitely we'll be buying that one when you come up with that. So I know our time is near the end, but I wanted to just ask, because I know you performed on Massey Hall stage mm. recently. How did it feel to be back on that stage and with the full orchestra behind you? Well, I think it felt... Um... It felt like the, the, 
like perfect bookend, you know, because I had played it for the first time and headlined in 2018. And that was the old Massey. And I was one of the last artists to be on the stage before they shut it down uh, right. for all the big renovations. And to go through this ridiculous couple of years and emerge finally with a new record and the band and this family and our life and all these things mm. and to be back at Massey um, in the new Massey, you know, it feels pretty amazing. It's like I got the old, it's like you shed the old self uh, and now there's a new self. There's the family man and the father and, and you know, just the, the new teams and new venue. And it's uh, it felt very special. Yeah, in fact, it was, it was like, not, and I, I just already alluded to the fact that I have lots of records to make and a lot of stuff, but yeah. it was so perfect. It's kind of like, man, I was done. Like, man, I don't know. Like, no, no, no. I, that was perfect. <laughs> that, let's go out on top. Let's just finish off at Massey and a nice big standing ovation. And then I'm like, okay. <laughs> It's all done. Here we go. Here's my here's my legacy. Here's the record. Wow. Um, but then you know you wake up in the morning. And you're like, oh no, I love oh. music so much. I can't be done. Can't be done. Good, because the way I look at it, you just close when you're at the Massey, the old Massey was kind of closing that door, that chapter, and now they, they were just applauding the opening of the new. <laughs> it wasn't exactly. The exactly. Moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's just wonderful having you back on stage, and I know that you were recently here um but definitely looking forward to when you come on tour to calgary or, or the prairies again um it's in the yeah. works it's in the works i think it's end of yeah. february top of march so it's about to be announced and, and steamrolled through so perfect i'm coming okay. yeah beautiful I, I know that i'll be maybe front row and center again but <laughs> uh i'll bring someone else maybe not your, yeah person. maybe not your son maybe not no your son i was like i'm not gonna waste my seat on that but um <laughs> thank you honestly so much for your time today royal yeah and my my wish pleasure you well on your tour i really do thank you very much. very much okay thank you bye for now so you take care bye, -bye.